zero, zero. And we're about to go live, so I better hurry up. All right, boys, should be correct now. Whoo! First map is gonna be DM2. I do have Milton and Carapace winning this uh, this map. I think it's smart by them to p uh, to pick this map first. Carapace is gonna get the low RL, and since two people spawned Telly, he's probably gonna get this first one. Let's see what he does with it. Very slow start. They did trade one frag each. Carapace falls down, so no mega for him. Oh, look, this is gonna get caught here. DPS is down there as well. They made their way to Telly for some reason. It, it is something about uh, Scandinavian players and not really doing the whole um, um, Russian thing, right? So when Bulat and Dot were in their games, whenever the enemy had a quad, they both stacked up in Red Mega in the back room and just made sure to stay there until the quad was over. It's very hard to attack if you get spammed by two people, right? So it's not easy to get in there and get the kills. And I think that's pretty effective, but like Scandinavian players most of the time don't really want to do that. BBS is going to fall to his death, death somewhere. Carapace getting ready for the next quad. He's going to trade with Locust, but BBS is going to pick up the quad uh, ultimately. And that is a very, very beefy Milton. BPS doesn't have any armor, so he kind of doesn't want to take that fight. And of course, Milton with a fresh secret red. Oh, that's your teammate. That's unfortunate. And an early lead here for the Unholy Alliance. BPS attempting a quad rocket jump. Didn't work this time. And they should be careful here because the quad is about to run up very soon. Yeah. That was a net loss of one frag, that quad. Because he killed his teammate. And no enemies. Do they have team overlay on? No. No, they don't. But it is allowed, but n neither team wants to have it on. Is Loctar playing in this tourney? Uh, no. He wasn't. Loctar is kind of, uh, sort of on a break. Like, he'll, he'll be here for the dual tournaments. But the casual play is kind of on a break right now, casual play-wise. Carp is getting another frag here, and this is a very bad start for BPS and Locust. Like, yeah, BPS on a negative one, and he was the only one to have a quad on their team. He fell to his death once, has one team frag, and team kill. Uh, and one enemy kill, so that's not a very good start for for team aeronauts, but as their name suggests The N2 is not their map. Airwalk is Yo, what's up? Welcome to the stream Get to see Locus a little bit here Both teams very low on armor just now picking up a couple of armors Getting ready for the quad. It's about to spawn in two seconds. The Locust should be able to pick this one up. Let's see if he can get any kills with it that aren't his teammate. Wasting a little bit of time, if you ask me. Uh, going for that Telefrag. I think BPS had that secured. Nice. Locust getting a couple kills here. Milton is going to evade that rocket, so he's going to be fine. He is going to win a fight against BPS on the other side of the map. But Locust uh, really stacked here. 200-200, very beefy. And he did get a couple of frags with that quad. So that kind of brings them back into the game a little bit. 17 to 11. Still a lot of time left on the clock. Ooh, it's a rocket straight to the face by Carapace. That's going to make him go back for another armor before continuing to the quad, most likely. It's about to spawn in 10 seconds. He's not going to go for the rocket jump up to high. He's going to try to attack from big instead. Milton is trying to protect this. And he's going to get the first frag and the second one on, uh, on Locust as well. Ah, uh, this is bad for... Oh, no, Team Aeronauts. This is like Repi versus UL. Poor BPS. Three spawns in a row. <laughs> Oh, Milton almost boring there and almost killing his teammate, but you know, when you're Milton, it's always just almost. 
doesn't actually happen. So he barely survived. And he just barely missed his teammate. But in the end, that was a very, very good quad run. And so that's going to double their score. Oh, what a beautiful fight by BPS. They're going to trade frags. Uh, but he finished that fight off with a mid-air rocket. That was, that was a beautiful fight by BPS, actually. Kerb is getting ready for this, uh, this quad. He's going to leave it for Milton. So Milton is going to pick that up. He has a little bit of more... Uh, a little bit more armor. And now he's getting ready for his assault. He's just going to pick up this yellow. And here we go. Oh, he's going to get very, very sandwiched by Locust and BPS. He's going to uh, end up killing Locust and himself. Which sometimes is just like getting the making the most out of it. Like he knew that he was dead. So why not take someone with him? No stopping the Miltonizer. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Big fight in the ba uh, big room here. Everybody involved on both sides. Ooh, nice, nice fight by Locust. That was clean. That was clean. Getting the kill on Carapace. Locust noob without shaft. I wouldn't say that, but it's definitely his uh, weakest map. Not getting everything he wants done with this uh, quad. He's got to fall into the hardest jumping quake. Oh, he, he gets Milton at the end of the, this quad run. Kind of redeeming himself a little bit. The quads so far in this game have definitely been the deciding factor. The trading is pretty much equal here. And now BPS and Loki is doing a really good job getting a lot of frags. Only down 12 frags now. When it looked like... Uh, Carapace and Milton were going to push ahead and pull ahead. Locust and BPS are going to win 6 3-6-S. Uh, oh, but that was unfortunate for Locust and BPS. Both of them going down right before this quad and Milton is going to get yet another quad run. He's going to pick, probably pick up a yellow here before going on the assault. And here we go once again. Let's see what he does this time. Last time he had to kill himself. And take Locust in the fall. Uh, not this time. Uh-oh. Both Megas on Milton now. And a red. You don't want Milton to be this stacked. They're gonna need a very, very good fight. Oh, beautiful play by Milton. With a mid-air rocket to finish off that kill. He's gonna get another one. Doesn't have to go for the Mega, of course, because he, ha he already has both. A little bit of armor before this next quad. Maybe Carapace is going to pick this one up, actually, because he has some red armor. But we never know. Still two Megas on Milton, so we'll have to see. Maybe Carapace is just going to protect him. No, he's going to pick up the quad. Let's see what Carapace can do with this. Once again, the Unholy Alliance pulling ahead a little bit. It is called the Unholy Alliance because, of course, there was a big rivalry between Sudden Death, Team Sudden Death, and Team The Viper Squad. Uh, they met in a couple of finals and went to pretty much all the QH lands and so on. Bigger ones. Oh. Milton finally goes down. But with only one minute remaining, this is not going to be a very close contest. But yeah, uh, that rivalry lasted for a very long time. Of course, there were other clans involved as well, slackers and, and so on. But uh, yeah, Milton and Carapace teaming up is definitely what we would call an unholy alliance. One sudden death player and one TVS player. Not to mention one Swede and one Finn. I mean, there's that rivalry as well. Finnish and Swedes. Finns and Sweden. Alright, Carapace is... 
Gotta wait it out with this very last quad of map number one. And not a very close contest. Uh, Locust actually out fragging BPS by quite a bit. But Milton and Carapace way ahead. Uh, for good measure, BPS is gonna die in the lava as well. 54 to 25, the final score of map number one. So, I'm gonna expect that we get to see Arawak next, and here we go. <laughs> so the Aeronauts turn to their home base and see if they can uh, get on the board. Money eases uh, differences, that is very true. We have the same thing um, at uh, QuakeCon 2016. That was the 20th anniversary for uh, for Quake World and um, uh, Bethesda and uh, those guys put together a $25,000 2-on-2 tournament for Quake World. And that time, Milton teamed up with Recall. So, yeah, money does kind of dictate how the teams look like or what the teams look like. But here we go. Map number two, Arrow Walk. Three, two, one. Bad spawns for both Milton and Carapace. Milton is gonna get the red armor though, but the first quad goes to Locust and he is gonna get a very quick kill on that red armor. So the red armor is gone and no more armors for Carapace or Milton. Let's see how many frags Locust can get on his best map. Oh, he's gonna get spammed down by Carapace. Good job by Carapace, but the red armor is gonna be available for BPS. Oh my god, did you see that corpse? Just came flying. All right, so a very good start for the aeronauts on this map, which is exactly what they wanted, of course, on their home home map. Milton managed to steal a, um, a yellow armor, and he gets the frag on, on Locust as well. But the, yeah, the red armor is more important. As is the quad, and BPS is getting ready for that. He's gonna pick it up, and he might be spammed down here by Carapace, and that is usually how it goes on Arrowwalk. It's very hard to survive with the quad in this map against good players. BPS managed to get that red armor, by the way, which is huge, because the Unholy Alliance was actually getting some control after killing that quad. They managed to kill both Locust and BPS, and Carapace is now very beefy with a red armor. And uh, the Mega, but uh, BPS managed to get the next red, which was very important. Or things could have spiraled out of control for for the Aeronauts. And Milton and Carapace getting a lot of frags here in a row. No armors for BPS and Locust whatsoever right now. Well, a green one, I guess. We're almost tied. Let's see who we're... This is gonna be an interesting map. I, I, I can't help but think back at the uh, quad is about to spawn and Locust is going the other way, but they're still gonna secure it. BPS did get the Mega, so he's pretty okay here. He has a lot of cells and, and a lightning gun, so could potentially get a lot of frags here. If he doesn't get killed by Milton, and Milton is gonna take him down. So quad over. But some control gained, thanks to that quad, of course. Red is about to spawn. Locust is ready for that. And Locust with 100 cells is always scary. Omega is available. BPS don't take it. Okay. Kind of had to. <laughs> Milton fell to his death. He got launched in down into the floor. Uh, Locust is getting ready for the next red as well before the next quad. Quad is coming up in 15, so no more reds before the quad spawns. Here we go. Locust just trying to preserve as much armor as possible before this quad because... Oh, that's beautiful play by BPS and Locust. And the Mega is available for Locust as well. This could be a very, very strong quad. Use your lightning gun. Don't use the rocket launcher. I don't want to see the rocket launcher out of Locust. I want to see his lightning gun. He has the cells for it. He's going to get the yellow armor here as well. Ooh, who almost kills his teammate there. And <laughs> BPS almost hitting uh, Locust with a, with a grenade. Look, it's not finding too many frags here, but BPS does have red ar uh, armor under control and the lightning gun, of course. Very big point of interest on this map. 
And the frags are heavily in favor of BPS and Locust now. Four minutes into this game. Locust looking a little bit nervous, I gotta say, but... Still doing pretty well, getting a lot of frags here. Locust on 27, BPS on 24, because he got a team kill right there. Quickly makes that 26. Milton stuck on six frags. You don't often see uh, Milton with only six frags after four and a half minutes playing. Oh, that was a beautiful rocket by BPS onto Carapus. But no armors for him available anywhere. And he's getting spammed. They don't have any control over the red armor. Milton is gonna pick up a Mega. No, he's not. He's gonna try to dodge the rockets and uh, that kind of cost him the Mega, I think. Although, if he went for the Mega, who knows, he might have died to the rocket spam. So a completely different story here in map number two. As of course was to be expected. <laughs> oh, that's a very important spawn for Milton. Actually, three seconds before the quad. Getting that red armor spawn is huge. Who's gonna pick up the quad though? It's actually gonna be Locust. Somehow he managed to survive that. And he gets the quad. He's gonna get a little bit of HP here as well. He is gonna go down eventually to Carapace, but still good job getting that quad. I did not expect him to to, uh, to steal that. Carapace now trying to keep Red Armor safe. Gonna kill Milton for good measure. And he's not gonna be able to keep it safe until the Red Armor spawned. Is that Locust is gonna get the red? But we still have at least one more red. Well, we do have one more red before the quad. So Mil oh, Locust is gonna lose that lightning gun fight against Milton. Milton did have yellow and mega though, so. Alright, red is about to spawn. Let's see who gets it. And okay, it's gonna be Carapace. Let's see if they can make it to the quad though in time. Milton is here with the yellow. He is gonna go down to Locust yet again, and Carapace comes in and kills Locust, so he's gonna get the quad, but he only has 70 HP and he's gonna go down. 77 to 34. It's still not over though. This is Arrow Walk, don't forget. Milton gets the red. Let's see if he's gonna keep this area safe or go for go for some frags here. Wow, BPS kills his teammate midair. It was a beautiful uh, midair rocket, unfortunately on the wrong target. Yeah, Milton just looking for uh, for uh, for frags here. They're gonna lose control over Red Armor yet again. Red Armor is uh, available. It's still available. No, okay, it was picked up now. BPS spawned it. Oh, nice lightning gun by Milton. Not very known for his lightning gun uh, aim, Milton is, but uh, if you're the best player in the world, you you're gonna be good at it. Just not the best. All right, the quad is gonna go down. It was stolen by Locust before he went down. Which is exactly what B uh, what BPS and Locust need to do now and want to do now. Just to make sure that Milton or Carapace do don't go on like some crazy quad run. And they should be fine in this game number two. And welcome everyone uh, to the stream, by the way, whoever I didn't uh, acknowledge. This is BPS and Locust versus Milton and Carapace in the 2-on-2 Masters tournament. With a six and a half thousand US dollar prize pool. Whoever wins this game is guaranteed at least 1500 uh, US dollars. As they will advance to the grand finals. This is the winner bracket final. Should maybe have put that in the title. If you're curious about the brackets, you can always type exclamation mark brackets. And uh, the bot will uh, give you a direct link to the wiki and the, the brackets. If you're curious. Alright, map number two. We do have one quad remaining. In this game, but with Aeronauts being up doubled, more than double the frags. I do not expect to see any change. 
in this map number two. <laughs> yeah, you're probably probably right about that, Link. <laughs> BPS and Locust, of course. Of course, uh, called Aeronauts because they're both uh, very good on this map, and it is their favorite map. They've spent many, many years as rival uh, with a very big rivalry between them on this map, playing so many games on Airwalk against one another. Uh, we've seen many rage quits throughout the uh, throughout the years, and a lot of chirping between the two. But when it comes to two and two, they decide to team up and uh, make sure to always win Airwalk. It's kind of their their way. Ah, BPS with a very sloppy lightning gun. Yeah, he got launched. Got launched by that uh, lightning gun. All right, last 10 seconds of this game. It was. It didn't end up being close. And Locust on 71 frags. There we go. 133 to 57. Your final score on Airwalk. So we're tied. One to one. I do know that uh, Reppy was also a big fan of Airwalk back in the days. If he's still on the stream. Also, everybody who doesn't know, uh, Reppy is a very old player uh, who used to be one of the very greats in this game. He is widely considered one of the top five best players of all time. Uh, so, if you don't know who Reppy is, now you do. He was known as the best rocket launcher in the world, by the way. And now we go to DM4. That's map number three. Yeah, the Brazilian, uh, the game against the Brazilians was definitely closer. Although, I need to remind you that that game was played on a high ping. This game is played on the lowest ping possible, pretty much. Apart from Carapaz and Milton, who are both on 25, but BPS and Locust are on 12 ping. Or even lower, actually, but because of how, how it works, it's going to be capped at 12 anyways. Alright, map number 3. DM4. I can't call this one because Carapace and Milton are great here, but so is Locust and BPS. And Locust can completely take over a DM4 sometimes. Milton is going to get the first red armor. That is important for the Unholy Alliance. If he can make his way unhurt, yeah, he's actually gonna get a lightning gun without taking too much damage. That means trouble for uh, Locust and BPS, most likely. But you never know. Locust does have a lightning gun, by the way. Uh, he does go down to, to Carapace. But yeah, here we go. There's gonna be a couple of frags here before anything changes in this game. It is not easy to get control back after losing it on Team 4. It's gonna cost you a lot of frags to get there. And as we can see in the very early start of this game, 13 to negative 2. 14 to negative 2. They have yet to uh, register a single frag. There you go, BPS gets a kill on Carapace. That's the first frag for them. It took them almost a minute on Team 4, which is uh, something you barely ever see. Oh, beautiful rockets coming out of BPS here. Milton is in trouble. He is going to go down to BPS. And this is where the control can change a little bit. Locust does go down as well. BPS now with a lightning gun, but no armors to speak of. But both Carapace and Milton spawned in Mega Room. They're going to trade here. Where is Locust? He's in red. He's waiting for the red armor. He does have a lightning gun. He's probably going to jump up here and try to get the control back. He's gonna eat a lot of spam and he's gonna go down to the lightning gun of Carapace. That is bad news for uh, for uh, the aeronauts. And this is that's the uh, like shaky aim of Milton. I I don't get it. He hits the shots, but it's like he's flicking his mouse around or something. I don't know how he does it, but he still hits the shots. It looks so weird. Oh, the red armor spawn, but they're both stuck in there. And BBS is gonna suicide and take Locust with him. That's unfortunate. That's another negative two. Net, net frags. Hey, what's up, Meeg? 
All right, 38 to 3. How many team franks do we already have here? Two, one each, okay. Look, is still on negative two, dude. He only, he's only recorded one frag in almost three, uh, well, two and a half minutes. Locust on DM4, guys. You never see that. You never see that. What a great start for Milton and Carapace. And it all started with that red armor spawn by Milton, by the way. Oh my god, the amount of frags Carapace is getting here. Five in a row. Six, seven, eight, nine, I guess. Ooh, just barely nine. And then finally gonna get down. But in the meantime, that just opened up the map for Milton, so he's he's got a fresh red armor. And oh my god, the scores, guys. 61 to 3. Locust did spawn the red armor, but he immediately dies. Is Locust on positive scores yet? He's on zero. Locust is on zero after three minutes and 15 seconds of DM4. When have you ever seen that? When have you ever seen that? He finally gets a frag or a positive score. Milton has got to get another red armor. And Carapace is just keeping the area safe. Milton making it out without taking any damage with that red. Oh, this is rough to watch, man. What a game so far by Milton and Carapace. Where did where would they go next? CTN maybe? I've seen the yeah, it's got it's got to be CTN. This is just this control from BPS and uh, sorry from Milton and uh, Carapace. DM4 played to near near perfection. 86 to nine. Look at this scoreboard, 44 on Milton, 42 on Carapace, 6 and 5, respectively, between Locust and BPS. Oh, Locust runs out of uh, ammo and that's just the kind of game he's having. Uh, BPS with a, with a red armor here. And now they have a little bit of control, maybe they can uh, make the scores a little bit more respectable. Oh my god, what? Alright, so Carapace gets the frag there onto BPS. That didn't work out for BPS. And yeah, that 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 control was very short-lived. Ah, BPS with a nice frag here onto Carapace actually, but uh, trades coming in here. So no real control for either team right now. Oh, Locust ends up in the lava with that fresh red armor. That hurts, man. That hurts. My eggs, man. That's fantastic, I would say. Brolin, what's up, dude? Uh, please, which map was played first and what was the score? Uh, the first map was DM2. Milton and Carapace abusing the fact that Locust is not very comfortable on DM2. That was a double frag by uh, Carapace, by the way. Two kills in mid-air with one rocket. <laughs> a pretty good uh, demo to save after this for some highlight frags uh, so yeah DM DM2 was played first it was a pretty convincing win for Milton and Carapace the second map was Arrow Walk which uh, the Aeronauts BPS and Locust won pretty convincingly as well and as we can see on this map number three it's not even close but they did have the perfect start. Milton did get the first uh, red armor. He made it out without losing any of that red armor. And they kind of established control right away. We saw like a, a frag lead of like 80 frags. The first four or five minutes. Wow, Carapace came flying. Didn't get the kill though. It looked cool. Oh, 2 HP and uh, Milton is going to spawn red. BPS has no hope of surviving this. Here he is, Milton. The Finnish Phenom. In Quake World. Oh, 
on um, at QH Land 2017. People were discussing whether uh, Milton might be a vampire because apparently, according to Fefe and Loctart, he plays more than 24 hours a day, which is uh, physically impossible, but not for Milton. He defies the laws of physics. And, um, yeah. So according to them, it's Milton the Vampire. I want to say the Finnish Phenom, though, when it comes to Quake World. It is a title that is used in other games as well, but in Quake World, it definitely is true. Finnish Phenom, that's Serol. Yeah, in, in StarCraft it is, for sure. And indeed, Milton is the, the Serol of Quake World. The Finnish Gretzky. <laughs> Yeah, that works too, for me. But the, it doesn't roll off the tongue uh, as well as the, the Finnish Phenom. In StarCraft terms, Milton is the Bond one. Um, yeah, for sure. <laughs> There's been a couple of Bond ones in, uh, in, um, in Quake World. But I think the two main ones would probably be Dag and Milton. Oh! Telefrag on BBS. Last minute of play here. The, the scores are looking a little bit better for uh, BPS and Locust, but it's still not even close. As we see Milton on 73, 74 frags here. Okay, actually didn't get that frag. So 73 still. 69 on Carapace, Locust with 28. BPS on 24. Let's keep in mind that Locust, it took him, it took him like, um, yeah, three, more than three minutes to get a positive score, which is kind of crazy to think about. Probably the strongest lightning gun in Quake World. And on a map like DM2, and you still can't uh, get a frag before three minutes, that is unheard of. I, th I, th I would actually say that there's only been two Bonchwas in uh, Quake World. To qualify as a Bonchwa, like, in, uh, in StarCraft terms, like, Serol is not a Bonchwa. He hasn't been dominant for long enough. I would say there's only really one Bonchwa in StarCraft 2, and that would be MVP. Anyways, 148 to 58, your final score on DM4. Let's change the scores here. Two to one in favor of UA. <laughs> the Unholy Alliance. I don't think Lakerman qualifies. He was uh, he was never dominant for a longer period of time. It's a good shout out though, but like like you can't forget about Lakerman. But it's like I don't call Griffin a bunch either, because he was playing during the Dag era, and Dag was better overall, if you ask me, than Griffin. He was good at everything, 4 on 4, 2 on 2, 1 on 1. He was just uh, dominant for... Uh, yeah. Even if Griffin made it to pretty much all the all the grand finals, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Wimpy, what's up, dude? Yo, I got rid of the uh, man bun yesterday, Wimpy. It's coming back though, but uh, it's gonna take a little bit. I cut my hair actually, I cut my hair. I'm no longer long haired. I just wanted to reset all the fibers and shit. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I don't have long hair currently. I'm so proud. <laughs> yeah, it's a no man bun for now. It is what it is. But soon enough, it's gonna it's gonna grow back. All right, map number four is gonna be CTM DM3 as uh, as I predicted. So if BPS and Locus wins this, we'll have a deciding tiebreaker on DM6, which could go literally either way because these players are good enough that. Potentially, they whoever gets the best spawn could lock down the map and just win. 
but at the same time it goes both ways right because they're also both both teams are good enough to uh, do a takeover on dm6 a very good coordinated attack so it goes both ways but ctm dm3 is going to be interesting i've BPS and Locust has been pr they have been practicing the, this map so much lately uh, mostly against like BPS uh, sorry against Bullet and Dot uh, but they've been playing a lot of CTN so this is gonna be interesting of course Carapace and Milton especially Milton extremely good on this map so it's gonna be a hard one let's see how it goes potentially the last map match point for uh, Carapace and Milton Carapace is gonna get the first quad, but without any ar uh, weapons, it's kinda hard to do too much with that. He's gonna pick up a rocket launcher now, though. Potentially a lightning gun, so he... No, oh, he's just barely gonna get the lightning gun. Almost goes down to BPS here. Yeah, they're gonna get both armors. This is a perfect start for, uh, for Carapace and Milton. This is not what uh, Locust and BPS wanted to see full control here they have red they have yellow under control good good attempt by bps but not gonna be enough to uh, to steal this red armor but carapace takes a lot of damage before this quad and he's not gonna be able to pick up any more armors so he's gonna have to uh, fight with 39 red armor for this next quad however milton uh, actually milton is low on uh He's low on armor as well. He's down to 4 HP. He's gonna go down to Locust. Carapace is coming in, but Locust is gonna steal the quad before going down. So no quad run for Carapace, and he's still on 39 armor. He is gonna go down to Locust, and now Locust BPS actually got the frag on Milton before that, so... Potential takeover of the map here. BPS with the red. Oh, he eats a, a little bit of spam here, and he eventually goes down to Milton. Just a perfect spam coming out of Milton, killing BPS there, allowing uh, Carapace to pick up the red. Quad spawns, uh, yeah, uh, the map spawns with a quad and then it's gonna respawn once every one minute after being picked up. And it lasts for 30 seconds. And it deals quadruple damage, thereby the name Quad. I know that in more modern quakes, it actually only deals triple damage. But it's, it's still called a Quad for some reason. Oh! A Telefrag onto the Quad! What was Milton doing? You never want to step on that teleporter exit, I should say. So the Quad is going to get tele Telefragged, and that's going to allow BPS to pick up this Mega. And potentially this next Red, it's still 5 seconds away. So he's gonna have to survive for a little bit here. He doesn't have a lightning gun. Good attack by Carapace. He's gonna open up that red armor for Milton. Down to only 12 HP though, but should be able to uh, stack up a little bit. He has 100 rockets and 100 uh, cells, by the way. Pretty crazy. Yeah, I don't know why they changed it to uh, dealing to deal three times uh, damage, triple damage. I don't, I don't get it. But they still kept the name Quad. Doesn't really make sense. Should be like grab the triple as we see BPS getting getting a quad run here. And this is very very neat. Oh no, they're gonna allow Milton to rocket jump to the quad, and he's also I mean the red armor, and he's also gonna get the kill on the quad. Ah. Oh. A little bit sloppy by... And BPS gets another Telefrag onto Milton, by the way. Milton getting Telefrag twice in this game. But I think that was sloppy. They shouldn't have allowed B uh, Milton to just rocket jump up to that red armor. They should not give that up that easily. Locust is going to get the red now, though. And a couple of frags. Mil uh, BPS gets the yellow. Uh, there is one red armor before the quad, by the way. I wonder if Locus realizes that he can pick up the red and then go to quad. He will have time. And he is going to do exactly that. Oh, but he's going to go down to Carapace. And BPS is in trouble here as well. Milton is going to pick up the red instead. And quad is available. It's just sitting there. Let's see who gets there first. Milton and Locus is going to battle it out for it. 
BPS is gonna rocket jump too. He doesn't have a lightning gun though, so I'm sure Locust wanted that quad, but uh, BPS felt felt the stress and had to rocket jump. 46 to 32. This is a close one. For sure. Milton once again manages to steal that freaking red armor. He's been on point doing that. 12 frags apart. Now BPS getting a couple of more frags here. Milton once again manages to survive somehow. But the red should be picked up by BPS. Actually a very good, well-timed attack here from Carapace. But the, uh, the red is going to spawn and BPS is going to grab it. I love that timing, by the way, from Carapace. Just attacking when... Uh, Exactly when the quad, ru uh, quad runs out. DPS is very, very stacked for this next quad. Let's see if he can maintain some of this armor. Carapace coming in. Okay, that's almost all, all the armor gone. Here comes Milton. BPS is almost going to go down. He's going to leave this quad for Locust. Let's see what Locust can do with the quad and the lightning gun. Red isn't available until 10 seconds from now. And all they want is frags. They're only down 7. He's not finding the frags. There's Milton. He's gonna pick up the red here. Mega is available. He's so beefy now, but he needs to find the frags. They're just looking for frags, but they're nowhere to be found. There's one, and he's probably gonna get the second one as well. There you go. And here, here we go. This is gonna be a nail biter, guys. 48 to 44. And BPS and Locust are in control. I do expect them to take the lead here, unless Milton and Carapace do something crazy. That's a good first start for Carapace, getting the kill onto BPS. Locust still has a lot of red armor, and the next one is going to go to BPS. He did have a pretty decent spawn. 49 to 48. Milton is going to go down, and we're tied with 3 minutes and 50 seconds remaining. BPS very ready for this quad. Doesn't have a lightning gun yet again. Which could prove to be a problem here. Milton gets double frag. A double with the, uh, the grenade launcher. That was the perfect timing for that. 53 to 52. And that breaks the entire uh, map control of BPS and Locust. I can't believe that he actually got a double with a grenade launcher. A fresh spawn like that. How does that happen? And he's going to get another frag here. BPS does have the mega and uh, the yellow armor, however. But the Unholy Alliance is back in the lead. Actually, we're back tied with three minutes remaining. BPS getting pushed away from this yellow, but he does want it. It's not going to spawn until 10 seconds from now. The red armor is going to be available very soon, too. This is every armor counts. Now, no, he's going to get team fragged by his teammate. Locust is going to get the telefrag onto BPS. That is a very, very bad timing for that. And Carapace is getting ready for this quad. He does have a uh, red armor, but he is going to go down to BPS. BPS now. Waiting for this squad. He's going to pick it up. He's going to pick up this green armor as well. And they're only down three frags with two and a half minutes to go. He needs this lightning on it. Oh, no. He actually loses the fight against uh, Carapace. And Milton gets a frag over at the red armor. But Locust gets a perfect spawn. And he's going to jump over to the red armor and pick that up. What is going on this game? 62 to 58. And Milton is in trouble down here. He's waiting for this mega. It's about to spawn in two seconds. He has good timing on that. And my, oh my god. Okay, Locust is going to get the frag onto Carapace. Only two frags apart now. And Milton is not going to survive this against Locust. Locust picks up the red armor. They're only down one frag. They're tied once again. Two minutes remaining. Milton is going to steal the yellow armor, however. The game is currently a tie. The server is letting us know as well. My goodness. The Aeronauts now up two frags. <laughs> With 1 minute and 50 seconds remaining, we still have 2 quads to go. Oh, the red is about to spawn, Lucas. He just jumped away before the red and Milton is going to kill him. So the red is available. Someone did pick it up. It was Carapace. And Carapace is going to get the quad with a fresh red. He's going to pick up the yellow armor. And here... Oh, no! He goes down to Lucas. What a perfect rocket. That full red armor is no more. My goodness. 68 to 63. We still have 1 quad left in this game, however. So hold your horses. 68 to 63. Locust with the Mega and the Yellow Armor. Doesn't have a lot of ammo, though. Red Armor is going to be available in 10 seconds. There's going to be one Red Armor before this quad. This next quad. But Locust is going to get backstabbed here by Carapace, but he was just too healthy, so he is going to survive. Milton still, still has a little bit of that Red Armor. And uh, BPS is going to die to Carapace. And, yet, and another kill. And another kill for them. 
Only behind four frags now. This quad is gonna decide everything. Ten seconds until it spawns. Locus is gonna get a perfect double kill here. And he does have a yellow armor. He is getting ready for this quad. It's gonna spawn in two seconds. Milton comes in, tries to attack this quad, but Locus calmly gets the frag. No problem whatsoever. And now I think this is the game for Aeronauts. This should be game unless something crazy happens here now for Locus. He is gonna get the kill onto Milton. Red armor is gonna be available to him. Oh my god, Carapus was actually setting up a trap for uh, for Locust, but killed himself with the rocket when he tried to deal damage onto Locust. 81 to 70, up 11 frags, 10 seconds remaining of the game, and what a C CT and DM3 we got to see, guys. This was a nail biter for sure after that very good uh, start for the Unholy Alliance. Uh, BPS and Locust is gonna win 82 to 70 in this map number four, and we're going to a decider as we see Carapus lagging behind on the frags a little bit. But what a D uh, CT and DM3. What a game. What a game. Let's update the scores. 2-2. Two to two. Whew. And we're going to a uh, DM6 tiebreaker. My goodness, guys. All right. No matter who wins this game, we got to see one absolutely amazing CT and DM3. And... We get to see a tiebreaker. This series goes the distance, and that's what we want to see. No three zeros here. Uh, as we see, a very good start here for Carapace. He did get the Mega and the Green Armor, but Locust did get the uh, Red Armor. However, the first frags do go to Carapace and Milton, and they immediately take back control over the Red Armor room. Carapace is going to make the drop for the, uh, the Lightning Gun. The question is, is he going to survive? No, he's not. Oh, he's gonna leave a pack for Locust. You don't want to do that. So he leaves a lightning gun pack for Locust. The Mega is available. So Locust is gonna have 50 cells, Mega and Green Armor. This is the perfect opportunity to, to make an attack and make a move on the Red Armor. He's gonna... He's gonna try. And BPS is gonna get the frags here. And there's a lightning gun pack there once again for Locust. Another pack for Locust and he got the Red Armor as well. The trade went... Favorable for the aeronauts BPS keeping the red armor room safe here From any potential spawns. I'm sure locust wants this next red as well Oh my god perfect attack by Milton and Carapace Milton with a rocket jump getting the kill onto uh, locust Before he could pick up this red armor It's a beautiful takeover by Carapace and Milton As we see Milton here Still with the red armor, he's gonna make it back just in time for the next spawn. But is he gonna make sure uh, get it safe? No, no, he's not. Locus is gonna go get a double frag and get control back. So far, a lot of swings, uh, map control wise. At the beginning of this game, we're not even two minutes in, and I think both teams have had control like three times each. <laughs> kind of crazy. Locus has to retreat and get some HP. He's gonna miss one of the health bubbles. Trying to come back here into the red armor room. This is a very dangerous fight and uh, Carapace is gonna win the first fight and the second one. He's gonna earn himself this red armor. Only three frags apart though and we're still early in this game. And if uh, the control continues to swing back and forth, you, you never know. It's looking pretty decent here for Milton and Carapace. Carapace very, still very healthy out here. And just as I say that, the caster curse is real. Carapace goes down. But Milton did pick up the, the red armor, of course, while, um, while Carapace was out in the big room. And then they, oh, Milton didn't take any damage whatsoever. So that's two... Full red armors for Milton and Carapace right now. That is not a very fun position to be in. Carapace getting a double kill with the grenade launcher. Milton waiting for this mega. He doesn't have timing on it. He's just kind of hoping that it's going to spawn very soon. But he's going to have to make his way back to the red armor. Look at that shaky aim by Milton. But he still gets the frags. I have no idea why he does that. It's like shaking his arm or wrist or something. Crazy to see, but he still hits his shots, so who cares, but it doesn't look smooth. 
<laughs> That's the aimbot working. <laughs> yeah. And we've seen him do that on land several times as well. He's just. I, I don't mind the shaking. I just don't understand how he still hits hits the shots. That's the crazy part about it. I don't think I would be able to if I sh shook my arm around like that. But Milton can. And oh, he's gonna get very grilled by Locust. Locust with a Mega here, by the way, and he gets the red armor. So this is very good for the Aeronauts. Still six minutes to go. I don't want anyone calling GG's yet because this is definitely not over as we see Locust get three frags in a row. Getting them into a eight frag deficit. Oh, Carapace just killed BPS over in the red armor room. Actually, they traded, so... Locust is gonna be able to get that red armor secure. BPS kills himself. Oh, Milton has found himself a lightning gun. Which they could see on the kill feed, so it's important that they are aware. Because this fight is the one that Locust needs to win. They're gonna pretty much tie that fight. Milton eventually goes down to PPS though, so that means no more lightning gun for Milton. The lightning gun, of course, the biggest point of interest uh, together with the red armor on DM6. Sometimes it's even more important than uh, the red armor, but probably not in 2-on-2. Um, in 2-on-2, two two. Two two, I would say that the red armor is just more important. Locus keeping the red safe here. Oh, here comes the attack from Milton, though. Who's going to win this? Locus does have a lightning gun, but he's going to eat a lot of spam. Milton is just so good at hit hitting those weird rockets. Oh, BPS comes in to save the day. Kills Milton from behind. Allows Locus to, to get that red safely. But that should have left them... Uh... Yeah, Carapace does have a lightning gun indeed. They're still up uh, eight frags. With a little bit less than half the game to go. But now we have two very healthy red armors for BPS and Locus. Now the question is, what is Carapace and uh, Milton doing? They're both in the green armor room, just waiting. Look at that, they're just waiting. And whoa, is Milton timing out? Or what is going on here? Uh-oh, Milton is timing out 100 packet loss. Uh-oh, someone should elect admin and pause this game. Someone pause the game, please. You can just elect admin and, par uh, and pause it. Come on, guys. Oh, no. This is not what you want to have happen. Actually, Carapace is going to continue playing. Milton now timed out. And BPS asks if they should restart the entire map. Oh, yeah. Well, because of the fact that it is very, very close to a tied game, BPS and Locust are uh, in uh, the positional advantage. Okay, they are going to elect to restart the game. Just because the, the scores were so even. Oh, Loka says he's a little bit tilted right now. Not going to lie. Yeah, they had control and they were taking full control over the entire map. Uh, Milton and Carapace, of course, in green armor. And both BPS and Locust did have a red, so the l most likely outcome out of that sequence would have been that BPS and uh, Locust did take the lead, but we still had plenty of minutes left to play. But yeah, sometimes you can't help the disconnect. Like this is an online tournament, and um, things like that happen. They had control because he was timing out though. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I thought they were just camping it out because they knew that um, BPS and Locust had both had red armors. But uh, Carapace was just staying green because Milton was timing out. So yeah, we're gonna have to see if Milton manages to get back. Yeah, Kerpa says, for like 20 years, Milton has never lagged out. And then it happens now in the deciding game. What are the odds? Adjust time limit and stacks. 
Should be like a resume from replay feature in uh, an easy, easy quick. Here he comes, Milton is back. <laughs> Sorry about that, yeah. I have no idea what happened. Ah, uh, that is unfortunate. And I know how tilted Locust is now. He's probably swearing quite a bit on Discord with BPS. BPS trying to, uh, you know, crack some jokes, try to get uh, Locust back into it. Thing with Locust, right, is that he gets so tilted. And he knows it. He knows it. He says it himself as well. Like, his biggest weakness is that he gets so angry. And he can't really, like, contain his anger, right? Do you mind replaying this one, Milton asks. And, yeah, they've already kind of decided to do that. Do a three-minute pop DMM4 to calm the tilt, you know. Oh, man. Well, it's good that they're getting a little bit of a break here, so that uh, Locust can calm down, relax a little bit. He's not tabbed out though, so maybe, okay, he is, he is at the PC. I really hope that Locust pulls it together. I don't want to see a DM6 here where Locust almost gets no frags or something like that. That would be the worst case scenario. <clears throat> All right. Attempt number two of a DM6 deciding game. Never mind. Some dip one delay. Yeah, and even people in QTV are saying like, nah, look, uh, watch Milton and Carapace just dominate the, the next game. That would be unfortunate because we were having a really good game. They were almost tied and BPS and Locust were in control. They both had a red armor. Although, some of that, of course, because of the fact that um, Milton was timing out. But he probably wasn't timing out for too long, so. Yeah, as we see a perfect start for... Of course, we see a per perfect start for, uh, for B uh, Carapace and Milton. Carapace with the red armor. But Milton goes down a couple of times here, so the scores remain even. Ooh, good attack by Locust, and once again, uh, Carapace is gonna leave a pack, and yet another one. Two packs in a row, BPS picks up the lightning gun, eventually Milton gets that pack. So no more lightning guns available. Milton, oh, he was almost on time for that mega. Still a very even game frag-wise, and Locust managed to steal himself a red armor. He's gonna get the kill onto Milton, and that's a pack as well for Locust, and now Locust has a lightning gun. Ah, oh, he's gonna just barely gonna go down to Carapace. And BBS is gonna get killed oh, and, le and leave a lightning gun pack for Milton. Milton is gonna pick up the red armor as well here. Ah, oh, uh, BBS really needed to win that fight, but a perfect rocket coming out of Milton. So yeah, why I'm talking so much about lightning gun packs is because uh, because of the pressure that you put on the lightning gun hatch and you don't really allow people to get free lightning guns if you can avoid it. Uh, leaving a pack is essentially allowing someone to get down into the hatch and escape without taking any damage. That's basically what that means. And you never want to do that on DM6. As we see, the Unholy Alliance in perfect control here. Both have a red armor. Both have a lightning gun. Oh, BPS with a sneaky attack there. Getting a little bit of damage onto Milton, but not too bad. Carapace is now going to keep the uh, lightning gun area safe. While Milton waits for this red. <laughs> oh, here comes the attack from Locus. He wins the first exchange. Uh, but Carapace wins the next one. Gets the kill on both BPS and Locust. Four frags ahead now. 
not as good of a start uh, frag wise as the last one but I'm just praying for Locust at this point. Please don't tilt. Milton is gonna pick up this this Mega. I mean, I know that uh, Locust is already tilted, but don't give up now. Still have seven and a half minutes to go in this game. Milton does not have a Lightning Gun, by the way. Should be noted. Oh, beautiful Rocket by BPS. But Carapace is keeping the Red Armor Room safe for now. Oh, but he is gonna go down. He's also gonna leave a pack for Locust. That's a lightning gun. And BPS bailing Locust out there. Locust was down to 10 HP. He's still down to 10 HP, by the way. Just now picks up a little bit of health. Oh, no. BPS misses the first important rocket. Carapace gets the frag. I'm not sure where Car Oh, <laughs> Carapace steps on a, on a pineapple. He goes down as well. He did have a rocket launcher. I mean, a lightning gun. Sorry. And now we're pretty much in the same situation as we were in when we had to break the last game. This is going to be a free full red armor for BPS whenever he decides to go for it. Yeah, there's no way Lucas loses that fight. Milton wasn't even aiming at him. Oh my god, the grenade spam. Hitting two grenades and then Carapace gets the kill. Carapace has found himself a lightning gun. Still in pretty good shape. BPS is going to have to defend this on his own. He has 25 armor to work with. And he is going to get the frag on to um, Carapace. But he's down to almost nothing. Oh no. And he leaves the lightning gun pack for Milton. Milton is trying to... Come on. Pick up the pack. There you go. So Milton now with the lightning gun as well. He's going to get the mega. He's in perfect shape here to take over the red. Uh, but as we see, Carapace is already there. So Carapace already has control. Let's take a look at the scoreboard here. Carapace with 22. Oh, no. Teammate uh, Telefrag there. BPS managed to kill Locust. Of course not intentionally. Uh-oh. But this is not looking good now for, for um, Locust and BPS. This is full control for, for Milton and Carapace. They both have a lightning gun as well. Let's see what they do. <laughs> this is the moment where Locust should pull his... Uh, Internet cable. <laughs> Force yet another restart. <laughs> no, don't want to put those ideas into their heads. Did get a kill on Milton, by the way, but. Uh... Yeah. yeah, Milton got melted for sure. Oh, nice fight from BPS. Gets the kill onto Carapace. Gets another one and another one. They are down quite a few frags here, though. And they do need to get control of the red armor room. Four and a half minutes to go. Carapace gets the red. Milton still has one. That's going to be burned off him. And yet another telefrag by BPS onto Locust. And Locust, yeah. Oh. Oof. That's all I can say. BPS in pretty good shape here. He has a lot, a lot of cells. He has the Mega and he has the green. But he needs to win this crucial fight against Carapace here. No, he's not. He did leave a pack though. I wonder if he realizes. Ah, uh, Carapace is gonna pick that up. And get a couple of frags here. Oh, this is unfortunate. And this is gonna be controversial. If if the Unholy Alliance wins this, it's gonna be controversial however you do this. No matter the outcome here. Like, there's nothing... I mean, it's not the Carapace or Milton's fault by any means. Like, they didn't choose to, to disconnect. I mean, it's never happened for, like, 20 years when it comes to Milton. But, um, unfortunately, it happened in this in this case. But what kind of sucks about this is that no matter in what fashion the Unholy Alliance wins this game, if they win this game, it's still going to be controversial just because of that restart. And what's even more sucky is that there's nothing they can do about it. <laughs> Carapace getting a couple of frags here. And yeah, scores are 60 to 30 with three minutes remaining. And uh, BPS and Locust, they need to find the frags now. And the control. BPS gets a kill onto, um, onto Carapace, but it's not going to be enough. Carapace... Could just pick up this red. It's just waiting for him. 
There you go. Yeah, this is this is gonna be hard. Unfortunate turn of events that uh, things got a little bit controversial here, but yeah, like somebody said, nobody forced them to break the game. Of course, they're gonna be as good sport sportsmen as they can be. We're all friends in Quake World, so you don't really wanna, you know, abuse the fact that somebody disconnected to win the game, because that would also be controversial. Ah, it's a, just a shitty situation, but it is what it is. Two minutes remaining of this game, 72 to 29. BPS gets yet another kill onto Locust. So if Locust wasn't, uh, you know, tilted enough before, he's now been telefragged twice by BPS and killed. Uh, Milton and Carapaz uh, did say that they're sorry and everything like they did apologize. They know how much this sucks of course Milton just dodging rockets here by the way. He doesn't have any rockets of his own Here comes Locust wins the fight against Milton. That's the first fight that he needed to win And BPS is gonna win the fight here as well. And they're gonna take off the oh no Carapaz actually spawns the red and Locust Yeah, you can see the tilt now. He just says lol and uh Yeah, he's not happy about this you can't help but feel for him either. But it is what it is. And let's not forget that this this DM6, it did start zero to zero, right? Like it was a fair game, so let's not think more about it. 81 to 34. And let's also remember that no matter the fact that BPS and Locust will lose this, they're not out of the tournament. But it does mean that Milton and Carapaz, they are guaranteed at least one and a half thousand dollars, US dollars. 1.5k guaranteed at this point. Of course, they're gonna play in the grand finals. To try to double that. There we go. Final score 92 to 35. I want I do I am curious what they're going to say. Yeah, they're just going to call GG's and be well Lucas says yeah. So he Lucas is not going to give his GG's. And you can see even QTV are, are like yeah, they feel a little bit meh about the outcome of this. So TI here or TL. What about making it best of 7? Still curious if they're gonna say anything. I'm not sure what's gonna happen. Like, I don't know. We still haven't gotten any GGs from Locust, by the way. He's probably not too happy about this, as we know. Uh, but I think just, uh, you know, Carapace and Milton apologizing for the outcome because it's nobody's fault, right? It just sucks that it happened. Yeah, Lucas says, I can't believe it's true. I can't believe it's true. Is what Lucas says. He still hasn't called GG's. He just says that, I can't believe it's true. Or I can't believe this happened. Yeah, okay, there you go. GG's. And he also added that he's so tilted. He's very, very tilted. And then he called GG's and dropped from the server. All right, let's take a look at the last course, bros. So, first, we had DM2, uh, the smart pick from uh, Carapace and Milton, starting with DM2, of course, um, probably the weakest map of uh, BPS and Locust, especially since Locust doesn't like the map, and he'll, he'll die once and probably get tilted <laughs> on DM2. Um, then we had Arrowwalk, a very convincing win for the Aeronauts, which kind of is to be expected. It is the map that they need to win to have any chance. Because of the fact that they are weak on DM2, that immediately just means that they have to win Arrowwalk to make it a tie game. 
and essentially a best of three on the remaining three maps. Um, DM4 was an easy win for the Unholy Alliance. They got a perfect start. Uh, it took Locust over three minutes to even get a positive score, which is something that we've never seen before, I think. So that was just domination from Milton and uh, Carapace, especially early on in that game. 148 to 58 was the final score of DM4. And then we had the most amazing uh, game in this series. It was uh, CT and DM3. It ended 82 to 70, but that was a nail biter. Could have gone either way. The last quad pretty much um, sealed the deal for Locust and BPS. And they managed to win that map 82 to 70. And then, of course, we got to see the first DM6 that we played that we unfortunately had to break. Uh, it had a very strong start for for Locust and... No, uh, for uh, Milton and Carapace. However, Locust and BPS managed to turn that around and they were making a comeback. Um, they were five frags behind, 44 to 39, with full control of the map when Milton unfortunately... Unfortunately timed out. Which meant that they restarted the game, and as we just saw, this was closed for a little bit, but then the Unholy Alliance, Milton and Carapace, pulled ahead and won with a final score of 92 to 35. I want to say welcome back, Annihilator. Annihilator. Thank you for the sub, my man. I think they should play DM6 again. Uh, I think uh, the most, uh, the best way to do this is either they should have been quick uh, to pause the game. So the second Carapace saw that uh, Milton was timing out or that Milton wasn't communicating on Discord or whatever, the, the, the millisecond that Milton disappeared, he should have elected admin and paused the game. That, I think, is the best way to go about it. Um, and... If that is not possible, or if the other team doesn't allow Carapace to become an admin on the server, um, then I wish there was like a, a star, you know, resume from replay or something. So if you if you could uh, team launch the MVD, so if you could launch the MVD together, like as a party or a group, and then resume from play at that exact moment. That would also be uh, cool. That would be very cool. But uh, the easiest, uh, so, uh, I mean, that would require Meeg to, to do some serious programming, probably. Uh, but, um, I mean, yeah, they should have just elected and paused instead of replaying. Because I don't feel like replaying is always the most fair thing. And it will never feel fair for whichever team was in control. It would have felt different if Milton and Carapace was in control and had the lead. So had the lead and in control and then Milton uh, times out. Then a restart would probably be perfectly fine and Locust would not get tilted from that. But the fact that Locust and BPS was... Uh, they, were, they were having a comeback. They were making a very good comeback. That's what stings, right? They were in control and... Uh, yeah, th that's probably what what stings for Locust, I would imagine. Uh, Dog Sacrifice says they should have asked for a delay instead of just readying up and agreeing to play. Nobody, nobody made them do that. Yeah, but that's just trying to be good sportsmen, right? Like, we're all friends here, so they were just tr trying to do what f felt right or what is considered right. Oh. Is trying to do some tricks here. That's already been done, but people didn't like it. it didn't seem like Locust agreed to it. No, but it did go ready, I guess. Control was going back and forth so quickly. Still highly doubt they would have had such full control if Milton wasn't already timing out for a while. Yeah, that is absolutely possible. I don't really know exactly when he started timing out. Since we were watching, I think it was Locust at the time. Uh, that's why it's it shouldn't be uh, BPS and Locust electing admin. It should have been um, 
should have been Carapace. The, the moment he noticed that Milton disappeared, either through voice comms or that, you know, his teammate isn't moving, he should have elected admin and just paused the game. It should have, I mean, if, it, if we could make it so that it happens within like, yeah, three seconds, that doesn't change the outcome of the game too much. It should be very quick. Another feature, though, that should be added is, like, auto-pause if somebody um, disconnects. Or, or at least, like, um, it should be a feature. It could be annoying in Form 4, perhaps. In, like, mixed games and so on. But then allow, it, like, the server to enable that or something. So that, pretty much like Team Overlay, right? You can enable, you can enable auto-pause if somebody drops. Or if somebody disconnects. So the moment somebody gets 100 packet loss, you just... Um, the server pauses the game, or something like that. That would be cool. I watched the demo back. Uh, Aeronauts had control, but only one player with red. Okay, so that's when Milton uh, started timing. Okay. I might be biased, but it seemed like Carapace had no idea the feature existed. He knows that it existed, but... Um, I yeah, he was asking wh what the command is. Like, is it just pause? But that was, of course, after they already broke the game. And um, I actually messaged them. What did I type? Yeah, elect admin and pause next time. That was what I typed. That's when he asked what the command is. <laughs> yeah, I think so few players actually pause in that situation that they often forget to use it at the time. Yeah, that's true. There's a setting so you don't have to elect admin first. That is cool. I, d I don't know about that setting, so I would assume that a lot of people don't. In Half-Life, anyone can vote pause. That's probably disabled by default for some reason. Okay. probably uh, an MVD server thing but is an auto pause like a, a good idea like the server forces a pause if uh, one of the players drops which could be enabled like team overlay I think that would be the most optimal way to go about it because not all not all players know about the the pause stuff or each team gets one timeout that's also one way to go I guess Sometimes it can take a while to detect someone is timing out. They might be sending packets, but not receiving them. Ah, okay, yeah. Makisu would probably trigger it all the time. True, true. Yeah, that is true. Some people do have packet loss issues, and whenever that happens, it might pause the game. And you want it to pause before they actually time out from the server as well. So if the server were to wait, then the point is lost. Hmm. Timeout could be a thing, but it's essentially the same as pause, right? So I guess players just need to learn how to pause. I might actually make a thread about that, just to remind people that it's uh, it's doable. Because we could have avoided this uh, controversy. You just need a trusted elected player on each team who can pass if it's important. Yeah, the only reason they don't do that, I think, is because um, if you go, if you toggle ready, you uh, you force start the game when you're an admin. So they just go ready and wait for everyone to actually be ready before they they start the game. I think that's the only reason they don't elect someone before the game. It's not like one of the teams are gonna like sneak in fair packs or, uh, you know, enable team overlay out of nowhere. I think admin. Oh, is it just map uh, pick maybe? Is there some way you follow your cam in Quake World? I want to listen to the stream and follow what you see, but still be able to tab uh, access console myself. Uh, I just use uh, auto track in two on two. 
most of the time. So you can probably just, uh, yeah, or you could do that, of course, connect to QTV and follow Andy. But this game, for example, I, I never, uh, um, I never uh, manually changed perspective. But I raised a request uh, a couple of months back to tweak elected admin behavior in these circumstances. I mean, there's always the risk, right, that, you know, Carapace starts electing and the other team doesn't realize that one of the enemies are timing out. So they're like, why should we allow you to be an admin? I do think it's a it should be a pre-game thing, like Blood Dog mentioned uh, in the chat. Um, should be a, t uh, a pre-game thing to um, to elect one on each team. Why not, you know? And if it doesn't force start the game like Hangtime said it didn't, then uh, the only thing that would be affected is whether you swap maps, I guess. Because you you force swap the map. But who cares? Really? Alright, let's tab out of the game. 